Good afternoon, and welcome to the uh, October 18 meeting of the Historic Zoning Commission. I uh, believe we have a quorum present for today's meeting. And the um, first item on the uh, agenda is to approve the minutes from the September 20 meeting. Any comments, changes, amendments? I make a motion we approve as submitted. Second. Second. David Becker's uh, made a motion, and we have two seconds. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, likewise. The minutes are approved. Robert, if you would uh, introduce the first item, please. Okay, Chairman Cantrell. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, our first item on the agenda is uh, 933 East Main Street. The applicants are uh, Mr. and Mrs. Kent Coleman. Uh, they're requesting to construct a, a new driveway off of East Main Street, uh, and they also want to demolish the existing carport uh, and construct a new carport that fronts on uh, Cherry Lane. Uh, and then they're going to add uh, an arbor and a fountain and uh, two porches uh, behind it, uh, the rear of the house. Um, this property is located, let me get this straight here. Uh, at the corner of uh, East Main Street and Cherry Lane. Uh, the house was constructed in uh, 1948 <clears throat> in the Colonial Revival style of architecture. Uh, it's a two-story brick house with a classical porch, uh, side dependencies, and a gable roof. Uh, this house is a non-contributing structure in the East Main Street Historic District of the National Register of Historic Places. Uh, what they're wanting to do uh, if you can refer to the uh, the board here, or we have we have a picture on the monitor. It's the site plan of the property, uh, and you can see where they're going to come in with a uh, a single drive fronting on Main Street, and they're going to circle it around uh, to uh, have a formal entrance to the uh, the front of the house. Uh, it's going to loop around. Uh, the, the gravel the driveway is going to be consisting of uh, a pea gravel. Uh, it'll be landscaped according to the site plan as we see. Um, in addition to this driveway, they're going to uh, have a front entry. Uh, it's going to be stone. You can see the stone entryway into the house. Uh, and along the side of the house, or, or the side view of uh, fronting on Cherry Lane, uh, they're going to uh, construct a carport. And I should talk about the carport that's existing now. It's, been, uh, it's, it's also there out behind the house. Um, fronting on East Main Street, and I think it was part of the house when it was originally constructed. Uh, they would like to demolish it and put in a larger carport uh, that's uh, actually a lot closer to uh, Cherry Lane. Uh, they had to secure some uh, variances from the Board of Zoning Appeals, and I included a letter in your agenda package uh, with all the variances that were required of them. Uh, they recently received those variances at the September 29th uh, Board of Zoning Appeals meeting. Uh, and this will allow them at least to locate a structure uh, that's closer to the, uh, the street and the setbacks than, than our zoning ordinance actually allows. Uh, they're coming before the commission today with, uh, the, with the, uh, the drawings of the, uh, of the structure of the carport. Uh, in the board that you can see on the, on the in front of you, it, it uh, details the, uh, the two elevations of the carport. Uh, I think it'll have a, uh, a copper roof, according to Mr. Coleman. It's going to have a cupola uh, on top, uh, and uh, the brick. It's going to have brick uh, uh, base with uh, the columns that are going to be brick also. Uh, uh, in, in the style, uh, it, the, the type roof, it'll be similar to, the, it'll be the same as, as the house on East Main Street. Uh, they're also proposing to build uh, two terraces that'll be located right behind the house and it'll be separated by an arbor. Uh, you can tell from the, uh, from the site plan, uh, the two stone terraces, one at one end of the house and one other one's toward the middle of the house and it's gonna be separated with the, with the arbor. Uh, and they're also going to include a, uh, uh, a brick seat wall with crab orchard stone with a crab orchard stone cap. Uh, they're going to include a, uh, a fountain, I think, right uh, close to the, uh, the carport. 
I included several pictures and drawings in your agenda package. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, I'll be able to answer. And Mr. Coleman's here also uh, for questions. Are there any questions of the staff at this time? <clears throat> Would the applicant like to uh, address his request? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. The, uh, one correction, I told Mr. Lewis that the, uh, the roof would be copper. And I think we have uh, got some drawings from the architect today that would show it to be the same asphalt shingle roof as the current house. Um, and I've got some drawings that okay. might help you with questions. Okay. Yeah. Sure. So, Mr. Coleman, you're going to change the roof material to an asphalt shingle rather than the uh, copper. Is that That's correct? correct. And actually, the architect did that, not me, though I okay. didn't have any problem with it. <laughs> you may. Proceed. Uh, basically, the whole plan came about when we lost some trees in the front yard with the storm last spring, and we were looking to uh, to redo the landscape plan. And the uh, landscape architect came up with suggestions for the front and the backyard. Currently, we have a large driveway which basically is our backyard. We have gone to BZA and requested that the uh, carport be relocated closer to Cherry Lane, which will allow some landscaping and some privacy in the backyard. The water feature that is located on the, uh, the schematic drawing of the landscaping actually would not be visible from the uh, the street or any of the sight lines because it backs up to the uh, carport wall and the uh, <clears throat> the two terraces are actually patios which will be crab orchard um, I have included in the handout kind of an example which we've been given it's not the final example, but it's an example of what the arbor would be like, which, which would connect the back patio in the backyard with the smaller patio that's by the kitchen. And actually, those items would not be very visible from the sight lines of the, the street either. Uh, we are wanting to open up the, uh, <clears throat> the front yard kind of feature the house from Main Street instead of from Cherry Lane. We would like to do that by having this circular drive which is shown on the, the drawing and uh, it would have a rock border around it and then the, uh, the pea gravel or whatever you call that type of gravel. And I presume we would use some, um, some type of binding to try to make it not all flow out into the street or mm -hmm. have ruts, but it would be, it would have loose gravel in it also. Okay. I'd be glad to answer any questions you might have. Any questions of the applicant, from the commission? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a couple of questions. Uh, Kent, uh, this, this reminds me of the extreme makeover that's on, on TV these days, but. Uh, <laughs> This uh, is, you know, quite an elaborate plan, and, and it really looks great. But we have sort of, a, as a commission, been not real crazy about circular driveways, but the depth of, uh, of your property. Uh, I myself don't have a particular problem, but I am uh, want to encourage you to follow your landscape plan, uh, which will diminish the the uh, the uh, notice noticeability of the driveway itself. So. I would expect that this landscape plan will will be complete when your project's complete. Uh, 
Yes, we intend to kind of do it as one project now. Uh, whether it's easier to put in the driveway so that we could have some availability to park while we're doing the construction mm -hmm. in the rear, but the sprinkler system, the the smaller landscaping would all be done at once. I think we'll probably plant some trees, which we hope will grow to be larger trees, is the first thing we'll do, because um, we hope to do that in November. But as far as the construction of the project, I, you know, I don't know if the weather will have an effect on, you know, if it gets too cold, whether that has an effect on anything we want to do. but. Yeah, we intend to do the whole project as one one item. I think the uh, the hedge uh, in front of your cars and your walkway there is, is especially important. The last question I have is on the carport. Uh, on the, the carport, yes. The material, um, what material is on the non-brick extension there, which would be as I'm looking to this drawing to the right of the carport? Would you prefer it be wood? Uh, wood or hardy board or anything like that would be fine. Uh, either one of those is fine with me. <laughs> uh, I don't have a problem with either one. Okay, when, uh, when the decision is made on what material you're going to use there, would you let Robert know? Sure. Okay, thank you. If uh, yeah, I think it's intended to be wood, but I don't. I don't have a problem with either one of those two materials. And it could be a common. I don't know if they combine those materials anyway, but uh, I'll certainly let Mr. Lewis know. It says wood. No. Well, they, your application stated wood, but that's that's fine. I understand what you're saying. Um, there may be some other. I think the main thing is it's not going to be a vinyl. Uh, siding material is probably where you're headed. Correct. Okay. I had one other question, yes. Kent. I wondered um, about the um, cupola on top of your new um, garage. Yes. I was wondering what what your reasoning was for that. Uh, the original drawing. We've basically not had any major input, me or my wife. We've left it up to the architect. Uh -huh. And uh, the architect came up with that, and then the, uh, the landscape architect did. Then the, uh, they would have subbed out the actual drawing of the, uh, the carport to another architect, and they put it on there. Um, I like it, but I don't... Uh, I just, um, in looking at your house, that that style is, is totally different from your house. Mm -hmm. And in driving around your neighborhood, um, I didn't see any others with that cupola accent. I just wondered if that was uh, something you'd decided on. It is not. Uh, for sure. I think... I think, and, and I think now that you're putting um, asphalt shingles on, I think you're going to be happy with that. And maybe you could think about not having that cupola. Uh, I don't know that it adds anything. You know, it's one of those else. situations, uh, I don't have any problem with what you're saying. Uh, I just kind of took it from the person that drew it and... Yes. They didn't have a problem with what they did either, so uh, I just I don't know whether it's got any lighting in it that you know, any small amount of light mm -hmm. that comes out that's part of the feature or not. Um, okay. I've not talked in detail with the architect. You might want to look into that and see what his reasoning is for that. Mm -hmm. like it, I don't know. It, um, if you look around your neighborhood, I don't think you'll spot anything else like that. So I don't think he was trying to tie it in to some of the other um, architectural features. You know, I, I don't have a problem with if, if you don't want it there. Uh, we can. I mean, I think it. that's a personal thing, but okay. 
I was just curious about the design. We'll ask him uh, to see if there's... You know, if you've got any other money-cutting ideas, bring them on. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll ask him. I, I don't okay. know. Uh, I have looked around, and I don't know of a cupola other than the courthouse. Okay. And I don't think he was trying to match the courthouse. So. I, I share David's uh, concern about the the number of circular drives that we're seeing in applications. Um, we sort of opened that door and it's hard to close it. Uh, and at the same time, this house, because of its architecture, can can stand what the designers and the owners are proposing to do, I think, without without any problem with the landscape and package that's with it. Uh, I completely understand why they would like to have a backyard looking at the existing situation. And uh, I think this is a, it is a, a reasonable uh, an attractive approach to this. It's just that I think that as a commission, we have we're we're, we're opening, we're creating an entrance on the East Main Street that doesn't exist. That's one thing. Um, and while I have no objection to this because the plan is so good and the landscaping is done so well. Um, I do have a concern, an ongoing concern about we keep the fact that we continue to get these applications and we're altering the nature of East Main Street when we do it. And I think that what we have to do is keep in mind the fact that it is a result of the quality of the plan and, a, and of the investment in the landscape that's being done that makes this decision one that you can support uh, and that we're going to have to insist on a, a level as high as this with future applications or, or we're going to be inundated with them. Uh, but but this is very thoughtful, um, and I think that that our approval should be one of this plan in its entirety. It's it's got to be completed, and I have no doubt uh, that these owners will will do that. But I think that we should probably state that in the approval that if we approve it, that it that it's conditioned on all of the landscaping being done as shown um, so that we don't wind up with the situation where it's, as Joseph A. Lott would say, bait and switch. <laughs> that makes any sense. I think he did a good job, Mr. Cross, of explaining that it is an integral part of his overall plan and that he's trying to open up the backyard and at the same time provide himself with some additional parking on the property is probably at one point looked at coming off of Cherry Lane, which would probably be more of a distraction than yeah. making the additional drive off um, of uh, Main Street. And then, of course, he has the depth back to the house that easily accommodates that. Any other comments? Is there anyone here to speak for or against the request? Does the Commission? Mr. Chairman, I would move for approval uh, of this request uh, based on uh, reconsideration of the cupola, not not as a condition, but as something that you'll consider. And the landscape plan being completed exactly as shown on the drawings that are presented to us. Second. Okay, so basically the motion made by Mr. Cross is to approve the request as presented 
with the option of uh, deleting or maintaining the cupola as presented and using the asphalt shingles. Is that correct? And it's been seconded. Any other comments? Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, likewise. Thank you. It passes. Thank you. Thank you. All right, if you would uh, okay, uh, introduce the second one. Thank you. All righty. Uh, the next one is uh, the address is 521 East Main Street. The applicants are uh, Robert and Elizabeth Bray. Uh, they're likewise requesting to demolish an existing carport, and they're going to construct a new detached garage uh, that will have a uh, covered balcony uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, attached to the, uh, to the carport. Uh, they, uh, uh, the property is located uh, on the north side of East Main Street, midway between North Highland and uh, North University Street. The house was constructed in 1915 in the, in the four-square style of architecture with arts and crafts detailing and a central dormer. Uh, it's a two-story house with brick veneer and a hip roof. It is a contributing structure in the East Main Street Historic District of the National Register of Historic Places. Uh, what they're wanting to do is remove the existing carport behind the house uh, and, and construct a new detached garage that will include a hobby and exercise room on the sec with a second floor. Uh, and uh, likewise, they also had to uh, attend the uh, Board of Zoning Appeals and, and grant, uh, receive variances uh, for their property. Uh, and I uh, included a letter in your agenda package which outlines all those uh, variances and they were granted uh, approval for those variances. Uh, one condition I think that was part of the Board of Zoning Appeals approval was for our surveyor to help lay out the footing of the garage and certify that the garage will meet all the setbacks uh, and the project uh, should be com uh, the project should be compliant with the maximum lot coverage and the coverage of the required rear yard. Uh, it's it's uh, a little real it's kind of close, so they're going to uh, surveyor should certify that as part of the building permit. Also, uh, the materials for the uh, carport or the, or the detached garage uh, supplied by the designer uh, they're calling a uh, hardy plank siding it's for the covering of the structure. Uh, the garage door will be a three-piece steel insulated door uh, and samples of the lighting is included in your agenda package um, along with the entry doors. Uh, the windows will be a double hung clad window. Uh, the columns, uh, if we could have a picture of the, uh, of the drawing that shows the uh, detached garage on the monitor, uh, it'll show that uh, the columns and the, and the rails, uh, the porch, and the vent and the trim will all be wood. Uh, I've also included, oops, I guess I should do this. Yeah. Uh, my technical difficulties here. Uh, I'm getting uh, updated here. If we can have this picture on a monitor, it shows the double doors uh, with the windows and the vents. Uh, and this is the front view fronting the driveway. Uh, the roof material will be asphalt shingles. Uh, and the applicants are in the uh, audience. Uh, either them or I will be able to answer any questions you may have. Any questions of uh, the staff at this time from the commission? Would the applicant like to uh, elaborate just a little bit with the request? Complete. <coughs> Mr. James is going to represent the applicant. Uh, I'd just like to add, the only thing that's uh, probably going to be changed somewhat is the site plan. I don't know if y'all even expect y'all. Uh, the site plan was, uh, we were showing it seven feet. We're actually going to move it back to the, prop, uh, to the five foot setback, which is allowed to give us a little more room for the turnaround. Uh, Front of the garage. 
Okay, Mr. Jenkins. I'd be glad to answer any other questions that you might have. So the, um, the existing garage location, this new garage will be set back further on the uh, property than to be? New, uh, the existing car, carport is going to be demolished because it is over the right. setback. So we're putting uh -huh. it to the existing, to the original, I mean back to the allowed setback. It'll okay. be five foot on each side and five foot at the rear. Okay. And our site plan shows that it's seven, but we're going to move it back to the five to gain a little more turnaround space. In front. Mm -hmm. Is that the same location as the current carport? Uh, no. Okay. The, the current carport is on the side, is actually on the side of the property. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, What's the age of the existing garage? Uh, excuse me. The age of the existing carport. Uh, I talked to uh, the garage was built by Marvin Bride of VA. It was in the late 70s. And it's pretty deteriorated. And how much larger will the footprint of the, of the um, new garage be than the existing carport? Uh, the existing carport, I believe, was right at 600, and the new footprint's going to be about 800. 800. I was curious as to the, um, the height of the house compared to the height of the garage. It, uh, the height of the garage is 28 feet, according to the drawing. Do you know what the height of the house is? Considerably more, because it has what the same height is 10 and 12 feet, and so it's the house is considerably more. We didn't measure. Um, Are you going to be living out there? <laughs> <laughs> looks like it looks like a nice place to live. I have some concern about this. Um, the, the size of the new carport or, or new garage, in my view, is totally out of proportion with anything that I've ever seen that relates to this style of house. Um, this is a contributing structure uh, in the National Register District. I, I, based on my experience uh, as an administrator of that program, if this were a freestanding building on the National Register and you built a garage that size that was visible, there's a good chance that they would take it off the National Register. Um, I, 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 I'm not prepared to, I, I would want to see a representation that would show this proposed garage relative to the house and um, that's just my opinion and I, I'm certainly not uh, picking on Mr. James I have a great deal of respect for him personally and professionally but this is just um, I, I think we're this this is this is a monumental garage Mm -hmm. And um, I, I'm not going to vote in favor of it until I've had an opportunity to at least see a representation of what it would look like next to that house. I, I think it's I think it's an awfully big uh, appendage to put that we're going to see from. <coughs> East Main Street, adjacent to what is a really nice four square house, and I, I don't know that it's in keeping with the standards that we have, uh, and I may be the only one that feels that way, but that's, that's the concern that I have. I don't want to be inundated now with a, a rash of 
applications of people wanting to build two-story garages beside their historic houses. So mm -hmm. that's that's my opinion. I'm one person. Uh, all I can say with that uh, reply, again, I can understand your concern. Uh, we didn't address this in relation to, to the existing house because it's so much smaller than the existing house. And also the distance from the road. The original house is 65 feet from the road. The garage is approximately 200 feet from the road. Um, so uh, there's quite a bit of difference between the street of the house and the street where the new structure will be. And I'd like to say the existing structure there is approximately almost, well, similar in size. And I know it's one story versus two story, but square footage of the footprint is basically the same. Let me ask this. You, you show that the, the new garage is going to be 28 feet, and I have trouble visualizing, like, about how tall is the garage that's there now the, to the tip of the, I mean, to the top of the roof? We've added an 8-foot uh, floor above pretty much what's there, so we're about 8-foot taller. So just 8 feet yeah. is all you're talking about? In other words, the existing ceiling of the garage now is where our existing sleeve where the new garage will be. So we're going above it with a two-story structure, which is basically another you know, eight feet. And I'm, I'm well aware, too, of the very, very tall, they've got very tall um, houses on both sides of them. And uh, I, I believe, like you say, and, and I see it every single day, you Barely, the the garage is back so far yes. and wedged in there between these other big tall houses. You you, you barely notice it, yeah, it's, it's, and I it's think a, that's the way you know they want it. Into in the property, no doubt. There any other comments? I, I was just wondering, Mr. James, was there any discussion of a story and a half? Uh, would that allow enough room up, upstairs to have the... Uh, the original design uh, the intent was to try to get a hobby room for her hobby and uh, an exercise room that couldn't be done in the, keeping the low pitch of the existing... We're trying to match the house, the original pitch of the house, which is fairly low and it gives us no room for a story and a half structure. Mm -hmm. And also, Mr. James, if you had to knock the existing garage down to build this two-story, would you have to trim any of these trees around here? Um, that, I don't know. There shouldn't be the property itself shouldn't have any problem with the trees. Now, the neighbor's trees shouldn't be an issue again. Okay. Again, what you're seeing... That existing carport is on the property line. There is no setback. We're actually moving it to your left, basically five feet. So that should take it out of play of the trees. Okay. Robert, have, did the commission approve a two-story detached structure um, college or Lytle in the past few years? Well, uh, there, there was one appro uh, approved on Main Street. Uh, okay. Uh, Hale's property. There was a detached garage. Mm -hmm. My recollection is that that sat more directly behind the house. Okay. Uh, maybe not totally, but a little more directly behind the house. I'm, I think I'm recalling one that um, we went actually went out and made a site visit to. And there, there have been others, I believe, not many, but I believe there have been one or two others set back a ways that were that were approved. You talking about two story or a story and a half? Something um, larger than one story? Obviously I'm not remembering it very well, yeah. but <laughs> well the Swaffords. Yeah. The Swaffords. The Swaffords had a uh, and that's on East Main next to the uh, next to the church. The um, the footage number that you threw out that six hundred on the base and the eight hundred, did that is that under roof? Did that include well, the stairwell? The from the variances we requested, I've got that information. It'll take a few minutes to get. Um, I think I brought it with me. Uh, 
And all I have with me is the approval from the zoning request. But the 800 square foot, that is the footprint. Okay. So what, what's the depth of the new structure? Where did I put that back up? Okay. Yes, because if you looked at the uh, left, 36 feet. 36 feet? 36. 36. It's, it's 24 feet by 36 feet, uh, the main structure, then it's got an eight foot covered balcony. Area. Yeah, it looks like you did try to emulate the roof line on the existing house with the new structure as proposed. <clears throat> I think that's one of the concerns that we had on the house before mm -hmm. our, uh, with an accessory structure. Mr. Chairman, I, um, I'm, I'm not saying that I'm opposed to this. Uh, we have the authority to request uh, drawings or illustrations that are sufficient for us to make a decision. Mm -hmm. This is not sufficient for me to make a decision. And um, I'll be glad to give you a motion asking for a deferral uh, with a specific request to provide us with uh, an illustration that would help us visualize the impact. Uh, of the structure. I don't particularly have a problem with the design of the proposed building. Uh, I just am not comfortable with what I have in front of me to make a decision. So that's Did you, that's where I am. I'm just, I'm just telling you now. So you'd like an elevation? Is I'd like to see an elevation that could, that, uh, and, and with the computer it's I know Steve can pull it off, and I'm not lobbying for extra work for Mr. And I'm, I'm uh, again, this is something we can do. Uh, I'll be glad to do it. We can actually put the existing house, existing uh, trees, and show the new structure, which we've done in the past. We did on several projects on Main Street we've done before. Again, the reason we didn't include this this time, I, with the depth of the property and where the garage was, it really didn't, it's uh, such a distance it didn't come into play. Uh, but we'll be mm -hmm. glad to do that. I would like to say that uh, uh, I know you were mentioning, Paul, about uh, doing it with uh, delaying it to another month. We have been working on this project since uh, July, going through all the variances, requests, and all that stuff. So we're way behind on schedule in meeting the deadlines to get to each meeting. Uh, so if we postpone another month, we're looking at possibly another year. That was going to be my question. When when are they looking at starting the project? Uh, well, they're looking in August. Mm -hmm. so, uh -oh. um, Yesterday. Huh? <laughs> so I mean, it's just trying to meet the the meetings, the deadlines, and uh, just say we're delayed. So you know, I, and I'm not opposed to doing it. If that's what we have to do, we'll do it. But it's just that it's going to postpone us up and start a little longer. And we can get the drawings to you if we uh, if you want to see it. You know, maybe I can get them to you. Uh, you know, a few days or a week. I don't know what the procedure is, but I would like to make a motion to approve um, as they have asked. Well, you have a motion that's been made to uh, <coughs> approve the request. Is there a second? Well, we also had a motion. Was that a well, motion? that's what I wondered. Yeah, I, I don't believe that was stated as a motion. It could be. It was not stated as a motion. I'm okay. just letting you know that I had an, an alternative mm -hmm. to con to continue consideration of it based on its merits with the addition of 
a little bit more information. Mm -hmm. uh, with that said, you still have your motion? Yes. We have a, uh, I have one question okay. before we go further on the motion. And I know where Mr. You know, I'm sort of struggling with the visualization is also. Uh, Mr. James, can you give us an estimate of how much of this garage we'll see as we look down the driveway? I, I, I would imagine for sure the stairway is going to be behind the house. How much you will actually see from the driveway? Yeah. Will we see bay one or we see a bay and a half? How much of this garage do you think we'll see? You'll see a one bay and that's about it. Okay. So we're moving over. If you look at the site plan, it's it's straight lines, everything's <coughs> parallel. I don't know, do you have a site plan? It's, it's, yeah. Yes, we do. Yeah. 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 If you take a visual line from the street, you'll approximately see you're looking basically at one bay door. Okay. You can see this. Yeah. I have a picture of the site plan off. We could pull it up there. It's a little bit small. Yeah. Do you have a um, a pic? Do you have this also that you could put on the screen? Yeah. Mr. James, where would you estimate the roof line to strike in relation to the house of this proposed structure? The proposed structure probably three quarters way up the second floor windows. Could you say that again? Approximately three quarters of the distance up the second floor windows. Of the window or to the window? Uh, well, the second floor window is approximately one third down from the top of that window. Yeah, see right about there. there, somewhere around there. Okay. Just, uh, if you can visualize from the carport, we're basically going eight foot plus the roof structure, so that's going to put it approximately a third of those windows. That's the top of the roof. Are you saying the top of the roof, top or the, you know, you're saying at the window level? The window and the, far, the second floor windows. Yeah, that's approximately one third from the cornice line down. That Is that the window that's facing the street, or the window that's perpendicular? Uh, facing the street. Okay. And that's the top of the roof. The top of the. Is it a hip yeah. roof? So that's a low pitch roof, and we duplicated the same roof pitch. Just the P. Roof star. He's said a third of the way down. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a motion, and do we have a second? Motion fails for lack of a second. Is there a subsequent motion? I move that we uh, ask Mr. James to provide us with an elevation that uh, depicts the relationship of the proposed garage to the existing house uh, and that, uh, that we act on the request at that time after that's been provided to us. So you have a uh Another motion that's been made to ask for additional information by Mr. Cross. Is there a second? I'll second that. I have a second. All those in favor of that motion and came to say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. 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 Motion fails. Is there another motion? Yes. I like to make a motion. You know, they have put a lot of time and effort in this, and I hate to see them walk away without us approving this. We can approve based on renditions of the new drawing and go ahead and put that motion into place. Once he gets the drawings done, he can come back to you, Mr. Chairman, or Robert, and to set everything in play for we can move on to the next step. Could we do that? 
Well, let me just ask. I mean, I would have no problem coming back next Tuesday afternoon if he can, Mr. James can have that rendering available for us. That's fine. Absolutely for me also. I just, I just think, um, why delay it when we don't have That's it? That's fine. I'm not suggesting that we delay it a month. Okay. All right. That's my motion. And what was that motion, please, again? <laughs> that uh, we have the information back available for a, uh, a meeting yes. to be, uh, so we will not uh, close this meeting today, but continue it until Tuesday of next week. Well, if we're going to have a special meeting, uh, we have time to, to put it in the newspaper. Okay. And if we do that. I believe we can get that done and, and then have the meeting. If it runs in Sunday's paper, if we put it in the paper tomorrow, uh, we should have time to get it in for a meeting on next Tuesday. We just have it as a special meeting then rather than trying to continue this meeting. Yeah. Okay. I second that motion. Motion is second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Robert, would you introduce the uh, third request, please? Thank you, Chairman Cantrell. Our next item is uh, 148 Cherry Lane. Uh, the applicants are Greg and Tammy Waldron. Uh, they're requesting to demolish an existing carport, uh, and then they're going to construct a new detached building behind the house to be used as a uh, hobby and a workspace with a second floor storage. Uh, and they're also requesting to alter the front elevation of the house uh, at the front door entrance. Uh, this property is located on Sherry Lane. Let's see if I can get to this. Uh, on the east side uh, of East Main, of east, oops, on the east side of Cherry Lane. on the east side of Cherry Lane near Lytle Street. Uh, the house was constructed in 1947 uh, and it can be characterized as a post-World War II minimal traditional style of architecture. Uh, the house is a one story with a brick veneer and a gable roof. Uh, the house is not located in either the East Main Street Historic District of National Register of Historic Places or the Manny Avenue Historic District of the National Register of Historic Places, but it is in the local uh, historic zone, so that's why it's coming before us. Uh, the property owners, they're proposing to demolish their existing carport due to some termite damage, and they want to replace it uh, with a detached structure. Uh, the, uh, I have some elevations and some pictures in your uh, agenda package uh, that depict the, uh, the location and uh, the style of uh, architecture. Uh, in addition, they also want to uh, change the front elevation of the house by adding a, uh, a gable roof over the current stoop uh, and, a, and a gable addition to the existing roof line at the porch. Uh, the applicants also received variances from the Board of Zoning Appeals, uh, and, included, and I included a copy of the letter in your agenda package. Uh, the, uh, let's see. The existing porch uh, is approximately, oh, the house, excuse me, the, the, the applicant's house, including the covered porch, is approximately 1,300 square feet uh, in size. The new detached structure is approximately 587 square feet in size, uh, bringing total to uh, 1,890 square feet for the lot. Uh, according to the front elevation submitted by the uh, applicant, the height of the current house is approximately 18 feet. And the new structure, uh, uh, let's see, if I'm the same as it, okay, the, the house and the detached structure is, is uh, about the same uh, height, uh, which is approximately 18 feet. Uh, the new structure in, in the back will have a hardy plank material as exterior covering of the building. Uh, and it'll have a, a ribbon of brick as as base foundation, which ties back into the brick uh, of the residence. Uh, the garage door is composed of a T, I think it's 111 wood exterior, MDF, and, and also will be the columns and the trim material. 
uh, the gate, uh, which is going to be in between the house and the uh, building, will be made of cypress wood. Uh, the front elevation of the house is proposed to be altered by adding a, a gable roof over the stoop. Uh, and the drawings included in your package uh, depict this. Uh, I've also included adjacent property owners on both sides to, uh, to get a look of uh, uh, adjacent property structures. Uh, I believe I said that the columns on the uh, porch, are they going to be, are they going to be wood also? Uh, the exterior MDF. Okay, MDF, okay. Uh, the, the property owners uh, are in attendance at the uh, in the audience, and uh, they'll be able to answer any questions uh, that you may have. Any questions of the staff? I had two questions. All right. Um, in the elevation, it's hard to tell the setback of your proposed garage, mm -hmm. and from the site plan, that that answers my question, I guess, but. So the new structure is going to be, is basically going to start at the back of your house, right? Is that correct? That is correct, yes. Okay. Yeah. And the other, the other thing that I'm, I'm very concerned about, we've, we've been going through this today with, with another applicant, is that um, I'm wondering, even though it's going to be towards the back, if by any chance the new structure turned out to be higher than your existing house, I think that would not be good. Yeah, we have, we have measured the ridge line of the existing house and the design of the new is, I think we even had to adjust the pitch some to make sure that we do not exceed the, the, the ridge of the existing structure. The, the new ridge line of the uh, addition will not exceed the uh, ridge line of the existing structure. Okay. Any We're, other? With the the uh, the front elevation of the existing structure, with the change that we're proposing to do. Uh, we kind of batted around different ideas of what to do and what we finally decided on was tr trying to maintain that traditional, uh, a minimal traditional, I think maybe it was the way Robert put it, which that's about what it is with just a straight gable roof now. Instead of trying to make it in, into like a cottage look, so we were trying to just keep it very traditional in that manner. Mm -hmm. I can certainly see why you'd want to have a gable over your your front stoop, because you just walk right out into the yeah. elements, don't you? Yes, it's just a straight gable. No, there's no uh, stoop or accent gable or anything at this point. Any other questions or comments regarding this application? One thing that I forgot to mention. At the Board of Zoning Appeals, I think that was talked about uh, the, the detached structure in the back and its relation to uh, the Murfreesboro electric lines. Have you had any contact with MED about this? We, uh, prior to the, the BZA meeting, we did uh, make contact with uh, Murfreesboro Electric, and uh, the the line there's a uh, a secondary vault that is behind our lot. It's actually on Mr. Freeman's property behind us that runs down the uh, joining rear property lines of, of most people down through Cherry Lane. That Most people on Cherry Lane and Park Circle, their power comes from the rear of the lot. Uh, and they came out and, and took a look at that. Their only concern was the underground service from the secondary vault to our meter base to make sure that we don't build over top of that. And, and we told them once we have everything staked, if it if if we see that it's going to be uh, under our new structure, we will be relocating that service line to our house. Okay. Yeah, the, the survey doesn't depict that. If there's an easement or power pole on on it, does it? 
I don't recall that. The power pole is right. It hits about uh, middle way of the existing carport. It's right at the, the rear property line. There's a, where the three lots, my lot, uh, Mr. Freeman and Mr. Cunningham's lot come together. I think the only thing servicing off of that pole at this time uh, would be the cable and telephone. Okay. Any other comments? Greg, I'm, I'm sort of having the same problem we had with the previous application and trying to visualize what, how the new structure is going to look compared to your home now with with its current, with it, where you have it set back because the, this picture we have actually looks like it's even with your house and we know that's not true. We know it's sitting way back by the back of your house. So I'm sort of struggling to see how much of this structure we're going to see when we look down your, your Well, as, as far as that, you know, looking at it, uh, that's it, from the street, that's what you'll be seeing. Uh, the other part, the covered patio area, will be uh, covered by the, or, or blocked by the existing structure. And uh, okay. so, as you're, you know, th this is basically as you'd be looking at it. It's straight on at the uh, the property. It's keeping in mind that as as the new structure is going to be set back a little further, you know it will uh, appear to be not as tall, uh, just by as you would draw something in a perspective uh, picture would would have the, the the item in the background appear to be smaller than the item in the foreground. I can see why you want to make this improvement to your property and make it more usable and um, it's hard to have a patio under your carport that you've got right now. Yeah. It's, yeah. We can even see from the pictures. Not much of a patio for right. you, is it? Any other thoughts, comments? I'm, I'm personally, I'm good with this. I've got a representation that I, yeah. I think That's it's a, thinking about. I think it's an improvement. Uh, it's an adequate document for us to make a decision, and I'm, in fact, I'll, I'll move to approve the applicant. Second. There's a motion to uh, approve the request by Mr. Cross. Is there a second? Second. Second from Ms. Anderson. Any other comments? <clears throat> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Appreciate your time. Thank you. <clears throat> Robert, is there any other um, reports? Uh, Chairman Cantrell, I don't have any other reports uh, other than. You received a uh, calendar, I think, in your agenda package uh, for next year's meeting. Uh, and other than that, uh, I will endeavor to get this uh, ad newspaper ad for the special meeting for next Tuesday. In there. Okay. Um, I was asked to have you approve the calendar for next year. Can you can you all approve the calendar? Mm -hmm. uh, one yeah, one question like. about the uh, time of day that the um, meeting next Tuesday might occur. I uh, usually try to set it up at the same time, three thirty. If that's you know. What time does want. the board zone appeals meet? Does that meet on that same day? No, they meet on Wednesdays. Wednesday, okay. Is three thirty going to be convenient for yeah. everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay, fine with me. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the calendar for next year? So moved. Oh, there's a motion to approve by Mr. Cross. We did that last week. Or last oh, okay. Week. We're reinstating it. So we'll <laughs> <laughs> we're double stamping that. Okay. Because I moved. Oh, okay. You weren't here. Okay. I was not oh, here. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> didn't you? Didn't you ask us to approve? 
I did, but I was told we already approved it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Everybody needs somebody like that. I have to prove it every other week. <laughs> um, if that's all we have, then we'll stand adjourned. I hope they don't. See y'all next Tuesday. Yeah.